รายการต่อไปนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสวัสดีค่ะมองเรามองโลกวันนี้พบกับบทสัมภาษณ์พิเศษดรวิลเลียมแม็กกีผู้ร่วมก่อตั้งและผู้บริหารสูงสุดของมูลนิธิ Operation Smile ซึ่งเป็นมูลนิธิที่ให้ความช่วยเหลือผ่าตัดเด็กที่เกิดมามีใบหน้าผิดรูปเช่นเกิดมาด้วยภาวะปากแหว่งเพดานโวมูลนิธิ Operation Smile เป็นมูลนิธิใหญ่ระดับโลกมีการดำเนินการในกว่า60ประเทศทั่วโลกรวมถึงในประเทศไทยด้วยซึ่งสำหรับเมืองไทยมีเด็กที่ได้รับความช่วยเหลือไปแล้วกว่า 8,000 คนดรวิลเลียมแม็กกีพูดถึงภารกิจการสร้างรอยยิ้มและสร้างชีวิตใหม่ให้กับเด็กๆได้อย่างน่าสนใจค่ะ Operation Smile เป็นองค์กรการกุศลด้านการแพร่ระดับโลกก่อตั้งขึ้นในสหรัฐอเมริกาในปีคศ1982โดยดรวิลเลียมแม็กกีซึ่งเป็นศัลยแพทย์และภรรยาเคทีแม็กกีซึ่งเป็นพยาบาลจุดประสงค์เพื่อผ่าตัดให้กับเด็กที่มีใบหน้าผิดส่วนอย่างเช่นปากแหว่งเพดานโวหรือใบหน้าที่มีแผลไหม้โดยไม่คิดค่าใช้ใจ่ายใดๆดรแม็กกีและภรรยาก่อตั้งมูลนิธิขึ้นหลังจากที่ได้ไปผ่าตัดช่วยเด็กปากแหว่งเพดานโหวที่ฟิลิปปินส์และพบว่ายังมีเด็กอีกมากที่ไม่ได้รับการรักษาปัจจุบันมูลนิธิ Operation Smile มีเครือข่ายในกว่า60ประเทศทั่วโลกโดยได้ผ่าตัดเด็กและวัยรุ่นที่ปากแหว่งเพดานโหวไปกว่า 200,000 รายแล้วดรแม็กกี้ Operation Smile started after a trip to the Philippines in 1982 What happened there It was a magic moment For us, I was a young plastic surgeon. I'm still a young plastic surgeon, and I was very, very interested in taking care of children with cleft lips and cleft palates. I had a dental degree, a medical degree, and so I was really interested in doing that. But I needed to have more volume, more practice, if you would. Mm. And I was invited to go with a group to the Philippines, and so my wife, who's a pediatric nurse. Also was excited about doing it, and we actually took the oldest of our five children. She was 13 at the time, and that trip, halfway around the world, really changed the course and the direction of our life, and our values, and I believe our purpose in life. We had the opportunity to see in what an area called Naga City in the Philippines, where literally 350 families who came at us, and every one of those children had a big gaping hole in their lip and the roof of their mouth. Yeah. They couldn't eat. Mm -hmm. They couldn't speak an intelligible word, and I just couldn't believe it. Every parent was tugging in our sleep, begging us to take care of their child, yet we could only take care of about 40 that first year. And had to watch over 300 children get turned away, mm -hmm. and it was heartbreaking to watch that. And we knew no one was going to be coming back. So when a lady came up to my wife and I the next morning with a ripe basket of bananas, cradled in her arm, and her daughter at her side, maybe about eight years old, with a big hole in her lip, she said, "I would like to give these bananas to you as a gift. It's the only thing I have to give you, but it's a gift." For trying to take care of my daughter, even though we had turned her daughter away, and it was horrible because this poor woman had tears coming down her cheeks. We had tears coming down our cheeks, and it was really at that moment that my wife and I said, "Why don't we just get a group of our friends? We've had a wonderful time. We'll come back. We'll take care of those 300 children we turned away. The world will be wonderful. Our guilt will be gone, and then we'll go back to our lives as usual." And I think that that's the first time I really understood that reason can lead to conclusions, but it's emotion that leads to action. You can hear all the statistics in the world that you want; that doesn't draw you. But when you see one child, and give one child back to a mother, and see the tears of appreciation and thanks, and the love that you feel from that person. That's powerful, and that mother may never ever know your name, but I doubt that they would ever forget your kindness. 
การเกิดภาวะปากแหวงเพดานโหวนอกจากจะทําให้เด็กมีใบหน้าผิดรูปแล้วยังส่งผลให้มีปัญหาด้านการพูดการฟังการทานอาหารและการหายใจที่ผิดปกติที่สำคัญเด็กเหล่านี้จะรู้สึกโดดเดี่ยวแปลกแยกในการเข้าสังคมและทำให้ขาดโอกาสในชีวิต What is the main cause for cleft lip and palate? Nobody knows exactly what it is. We know that there's a genetic component, but we don't know exactly what. We're trying to study that now with with samples and to try and find that. We know that there's a nutritional component. We know that B6 folic acid deficiencies can lead to it. We know that smoking and drinking can increase the incidence. We know that maybe smoke uh, from fires, charcoal fires inside the house to cook food, mm. and you inhale the smoke, that that can be a, a cause. But we don't know exactly. I mean, some of it's inherited, some of it is environmental. But we're working really, really hard right now to do studies on the nutritional elements and the genetic elements to try and find the cause. Is there any particular region in the world with a higher number of children with cleft lip and palate? Asia has a very high incidence of cleft lip and cleft palate. Um, the United States has about one in 800 children born with clefts. In Philippines, it's about one in 500 children. Mm. Here, it's about one in 700 children. People say, but you know. It's very difficult to get the exact statistics because in many countries, the children aren't born in hospitals. They're born in the village someplace. And if a child's born with a cleft and dies, mm -hmm. you would never know it. Mm -hmm.